All right, take three. I wanted to showcase how I made this random text. Can't really teach you how exactly I did it. I'm just gonna go over how I did it because the way I do teach it, it's really complicated and people are probably gonna mess up asking a bunch of questions, but you know, I don't know, I don't know, maybe I surprise you guys. So I'm just gonna showcase it and kind of describe to you what my thinking, how I went through in order to make this how it is. So it's like random text. It's all made by the follower modifier and yeah. So if you're not familiar with the follower modifier, basically a way for us to make animation one by one per letter in the text you have. So say we have this, we're gonna right click over here, go down to a follower and then go up to modifiers and then we can go over to and uh, choose the delay that we want. So let's say that we want a delay of one frame each time and then go to shading let's move the position. So we're gonna do position down here, right click the offset, go to modify with X, Y path and then we can get rid of the X and we're just gonna modify the Y. So keyframe is there and then keyframe say like 12 and then move this back and we can move this down. And then as you can see, we have our animation just like this. That's the way it is supposed to go. And then we could go over here and edit the spline. So we have some, like a nice animation like that. That's basically how it is. And we also want to highlight that keyframe, right click and then gradient extrapolation in order for it to be a smooth transition just like that. Yeah, that's basically the follower modifier. And then I exploit some of the techniques or some of the settings in the follower modifier in order to make this uh, monstrosity. So you can see like this, we can see all, we have all these splines down here. And yeah, so I'm just gonna try and go over it as best as possible. So if we go over here, first we have our follower. And instead of having the delay be one frame, I did it the length of the animation I'm gonna make it, which is 24 frames. So I keyframe from zero to frame 24. All my animations for say my X, my Y, and my rotation. And that gives us this. And it has, I mean, it has all the letters going at the same time. And how, how is it possible? You're supposed to go one at a time, even a regular animation. So the way that I did that is by, we have our main animation here, but then if you highlight this animation, right click it, go to set pre-loop and put that the loop. It allows you to loop the animation before the animation actually happens. So it loops all the way over here. And since the delay is delaying 24 frames per letter, it's taking this animation and applying that per letter. So this will be, say, say this this graph is going to be for this part of the graph and this graph is going to be for this letter, this letter for this letter and so on. And so basically we do that for all of our motion graphs we're going to have and we have this motion. Then we do something else that's different. So how do we have like the random position? Because you can see this is all the same animation. This is, this is where I add the calculations effect to the position. So this is our X, Y path here. We can go to, to right click this and go down to modify with and then, or excuse me, go to insert and then calculation first operation calculation. Or we can do, if this is no animation here, modify with and the calculation effect, then we get this setting over here. So this allows us to combine two different settings to our two, two different controls here and then we could make an operator in between those to do a bunch of math in order to put it together. So what do I have here? First I have the amount of how far we want our animation, animation to go. So we start at a say on the X we do have a negative 0.45 and this all the way goes down keyframe all the way down to zero and I'll show you the graph for this. It is this. We have like a little graph like this and it gives us that. And then on the second operator I have a sine wave. So this allows us to have that random in our animation. So if you don't know what a sine wave looks like, it looks like this. It's just a regular wave that you would have like this and you can put that, we can make that with an expression in DaVinci Resolve using uh, this expression here. So we have sine and then in parentheses we have time and that'll give us a regular sine wave and then we have all these other numbers that can help modify it. So we multiply the time by something by value it'll change the frequency of the wave that's here so let's say up this by like that you can see the wave got smaller and if we go down it, the wave gets wider just like that then we have the offset so right now if we look at the wave we're looking at it right here but if i say I move this value down it moves the wave uh, left and right on the graph so we can choose where we want the graph to start and i saw at 1.5 gives us a nice starting range over here right in front of the right over here at the crest or top of the wave over here and then we have the this uh 1.5 at the end which is basically our amplitude or how high and low this wave goes so you can see that 1.5 is right here so the maximum value you can have is 1.5 and it's also the same for the negative 1.5 over here yeah that is what we have for the, our calculation effect. I do this for the rotation and for the Y and it's all going to the X and Y is going to the X, Y path. So we can edit the position just like this. And since we have a wave in our calculation, it goes on for left and right, just like our other pre-loop. So if we put these two graphs together, we have this and with the calculations effect, if we get rid of this, we have a graph that looks like this. And so that is a graph going like that. And it's being repeated for all of our individual letters and our delays, just like this. So yeah. 
that's basically how this all came together. If I pin all these, you can see all of the hard work that went into figuring this out. And so, yeah, the way that this works is that because the operator ends at zero and it's being multiplied by this wave, it is basically this graph is being a decay for this sine wave. And you can technically do that all in one expression, but I like to separate it so you can see how it actually works a lot better like that. But yes, that is how we get our random animation. And so we could just edit, edit the first operator on our character angle, the first operator on our X control and our Y control in order to edit the controls the way that we want. This is going from 30 down to zero. And let's see these ones fit this to the graph. This is going from a positive like 0.45 down to zero with this weird little graph. It's like uh, this. I found like this is like the best way in order to have like a nice smooth animation, that kind of graph it's like that. And then we have the yeah, same one, but from a negative value. And yeah, this is being repeated all with different sine waves. So you can see like all these have different frequencies and offsets to them and amplitudes. And that allows us to have a different type of wave because we don't want the same wave to go because then it won't be uh, random. It'll all be like this on the same wavelength. So we can see this is that wave for the Y. This is for the X. Similar, but not too similar. And each iteration, there's a different variation of it. So it gives us a nice, it gives us nice different combo combinations of movements. We put those two together. And then also with the spline of the uh, rotation, because it's all very different stuff. You can't really see this one because it has large values. But yeah, that is basically the basis on how that is made and exploiting the polar modifier with the with that. One last thing, in order to have the rotation kind of be in the middle, we actually go to the main text page, go over to the transform, make sure this transforms on characters, and put this up by a 0 0.025 in order for the rotation to be in the middle. Technically, it's not really being in the middle. It's in the middle of the letters here, but the pivot point doesn't move really. So the pivot point is there the whole time, but it's also being moved and rotated around when we move the letters. It's still in the same place. So it's it's weird, kind of weird how it works. But yeah, I believe that's how it's working right now because it doesn't really work the way where it like when I move it, it stakes onto the letters. Just the way that the order of operation works going with the transform and the polar modifier. But yeah, if you figure it out how to actually stick it on there. Let me know. But yeah, this is basically that. Hopefully that made sense. This is not really a tutorial stuff. It's a showcase. And maybe I'll put this in a future pack. Who knows? But uh, yeah.